also nobody knew that I was going to be on stilts, not, not anybody here. It was my little secret. And uh, a couple of people raised eyebrows backstage. They're like, oh, I, you, OK. <laughs> it's what I do. So uh, uh, hi. Yes, Paul was the first person I met here in town. And um, when I came here, I had a, a vast array of experience with uh, performing fire and circus and sideshow and, and interactive art projects. And so I came to Greenville, and I went around from place to place to place, and I said, here's who I am, here's what I've done, here's what I can do. Tell me how I can help. Tell me what, what I can do to be of service. And most people said, you should go to Asheville. <laughs> Except Paul. Paul was the very first person. When I walked in his door, he's like, you should do it here. And so uh, I think he's probably the, the first reason that, uh, that I, I chose to love Greenville. Um, so anyway, that's not what I'm here to talk about. You already know that. So over the last three days or so, I paced back and forth. Not on stilts, mind you, but I paced back and forth. I had this, uh, this presentation that I created, which I was really happy with. But I am not uh, someone who does verbatim regurgitation. I'm someone who speaks. Uh, from the cuff, and I perform live, and so it's difficult for me to do this. And so I wanted to talk to you guys about all kinds of things, and I thought about throwing my presentation out the window and just coming and talking to you about the things I want to tell you about, about uh, how all pain is temporary and all fear is optional. But luckily, people like John Warner and Rick Fornoff, and, uh, they spoke about a lot of the things I wanted to say. So I want you to hear those things, but I need you to hear this. I need you to hear the hetero white boy, fashion victim, recovery, and rejuvenation, slides are slow, program. <laughs> A public service announcement from me to you. So this is Main Street. Any Main Street, anywhere on a Saturday night. These are the sons and daughters of America. The problem is not that they are not fashionable. The problem is that They've taken something which is meant to be fluid. They've taken something and concretized it, which is personal. So style is supposed to be an individual thing. And so when you mass produce it, it becomes obsolete. It becomes a moot point. And so the style that these people have chosen, which has been kind of force fed by the media, has become defunct. But the greater problem is maybe they didn't have <laughs> funk to begin with. <laughs> so what would have happened if maybe the, the kids of yesteryear would have had exposure to the grand forefathers of American soul, rock, glam, funk, psychedelic culture, like George Clinton, like Sly and the Family Stone, like Parliament Funkadelic, like Mungo Jerry. <laughs> Instead of maybe Alabama, what if the vulnerable youth of Greenville's yesteryear had been raised on a healthy dose of Bootsy Collins? <laughs> Just saying. Uh, funk? No funk. <laughs> funk? No funk. Funk? And no funk. So I didn't make it, people. So the Greenville TEDx contingent, those of us in the crowd, the thinkers and the dreamers, we are dedicated to the cause of the hetero white boy fashion victim recovery and rejuvenation program. It is our goal, our job, to help George Clinton, as he spoke from the mothership, Funk not only moves, it can remove. And so we know what we have to do. If we hope to reclaim the shamed, re-inspire the tired, if we hope to cure the dry, white, withered buttocks of Greenville's yesteryear <laughs> and replace it with a firmer, more bootylicious tomorrow, then we know what we have to do. All it is is one simple thing. I would like you to take your inner drag queen and use that as a white ball of healing light. Take your inner RuPaul sitting on the trapeze in the birdcage of your chest, and I want her to sing out, look at the bitch now. 
And when your inner shine proves, thank you, thank you very much. When your inner shine proves too big for your outer mantle, let this emanate from out of your body and let it reach out and affect every person and every place that you come to in your day. It's what we call the mission of permission. You have the power to transform, transfer, translate, transcend, and transmogrify. This is your transmission, but not with words. Our hetero white boy fashion victim culture got into the mess that they're in through words. Conversations have been manipulated. And so what we need is something more powerful than words. If every day, every sound bite, every t-shirt, every label, every second of every day, they are forced into this, how do we fight that? So when I point at it, you say it. Where is it? Uh, there. Now, when you say it, you have to say it loud because your mama's listening. So I need you to show it. I need you to wear it. Don't walk about it. Talk about it. Love will put the pep in your step and the glide back in your stride. And when the faces of the many are lit by the cut of your strut, they will recognize. No. They will identify. No. <laughs> and you will be able to give the greatest gift of all. No. Something that can never be bought or sold. And on this mission of permission, you have given that greatest gift of all. Love. And so before I leave, I would like to bequeath to you my last five words. If you don't remember me, if you don't remember this, please remember these last five words wherever you go.